This is a man of many talents. And we are so excited to watch him because his star is a skyrocket. Please welcome John Bernthal. stage with the Punisher, it's weird. <laughs> hey! I see a film nerd geek out, you're about to see it. It is an absolute pleasure to meet you, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Utah is great, by the way, man. It's all like... Thank you. Really, really, uh, really, really cool, cool people. And uh, my, brother, my brother lived here. He's a, he, my little brother is... All smart and shit. He's a, he's a cancer surgeon. He worked at Huntsman, and, and uh, we all really good to him. And uh, he, 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 the place is in his heart, it's in mine. So I, I really, really appreciate y'all having. Me. Thank you for coming. I, I, I thank you backstage. I, By you, the way, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I suck. I'm no, sorry. No, no. But Elodie just, just so you know, Elodie just texted me about where we're going to dinner. So that's what's on her mind while I'm talking to you. No good. Where, where is it? Is it should, we call, should we call her up? TGI Fridays or uh, <laughs> Chili's? They get a blue and onion. It's fantastic. <laughs> Are we really calling her? I'm calling her on. We're Spotify. calling. We're calling Electra. <laughs> Hello? Hello, D. Hello, is that you? It's me. No, I just want to. I want I, some. Somebody wants to say hi to you, okay? <laughs> She's gonna give me so much shit. That was probably not worth it at all. Dude. Now that I think about it. Um, I want to thank you real fast because I, I love our local film scene and I just want to say you did an amazing job in a movie called Wind River. It's a brutal scene, but I love it. You did a fantastic at it. Is she calling you back? <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> She's yelling at me for hanging up. Sorry, Ellie, what'd you say? Did you just hang up on me? <laughs> I'm sorry, they all want to say hi. Elodie, I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't have done... I just want you to know, I'm hanging up now. I'll see you later. Okay, okay, big love, big love. <laughs> um, I have to bring up something. Uh, a trailer dropped about two days ago. <laughs> Sir, oh my God. Marvel don't care. <laughs> you are gonna, you're in it to win it. What are the reactions that you've heard personally for that trailer? Because, uh, oh. I mean, Metallica, man. Oh, I mean, Metallica. Yeah, I mean, I think, Metallica yeah. won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, look, man. I, I, you know, I'm, you know, I've, I've said it before. I, I uh, you know, I'm, I, it's not out, you know? The show's not out, so I, I, I get real nervous before before it comes out. And I don't like to be the kind of guy who, who, who barks about something sure. before he bites, you know? So, uh, I just really hope that, uh, I just really hope that y'all dig it, you know, and I, and I know how much... I know how much the... Sorry, 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 no, sorry, no, no. man. If it reaches the percentage of that trailer, we are in for something very great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I, I just hope that... Uh, I've said it before, you know, that it's a... You know, Frank's a... It's a character that, you know, means a lot to a lot of people and, and uh, you know, members of the military and law enforcement. <laughs> 
That's something that I take uh, enormously seriously, and 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 uh, I, I just really want to get it right for them, and, and I hope we did. And I'm not gonna sit here and say anything else. That's it. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. It looks phenomenal. Okay, but we'll jump into who they're gonna. Do we have a release date yet? Do we? They don't tell me shit. <laughs> There's Marvel snipers in every corner of the room. They will take you up. Uh, I, I want to ask you real fast: if you had to take on Dolph Lundgren or Thomas Jane, who would who would you want to take on? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, I mean, I guess Thomas Jane. <laughs> uh, there is a microphone over here, and we love to take questions, so we can fire this up. Oh, oh, it's over here. Oh, it's there now. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I am, have a huge crush on you, John, so thank you for coming. Thank you, sweetheart. And my question is, what is the process of how you choose your roles? Choose? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, it's, uh, you know, uh, thank you, sweetheart. That's, that's very kind of you. Um, I guess you like giant ears and huge noses, but uh, that's your bag, you know what I mean? Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, um, look, I, you, you, know, you know, for me, I, 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 uh, I, I, I consider myself, uh, you know, enormously blessed to be able to, to, be able to do this, this job. You know, I, 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 uh, when I was a kid, I remember being in the doctor's office and there was this little uh, cartoon book about, about Babe Ruth, and, and uh, there was this one caption where Babe Ruth was leaning on the, the, the uh, he was leaning on the wall of the ball field, and this little kid comes up to him and says, hey babe, you, you seem pretty happy, and Babe looks at him, he's like eating a hot dog right before a game, he's like, I get paid to eat hot dogs and play baseball, like why shouldn't I be happy, and I remember something struck me there, you know, if you can, you can figure out a way to follow what you love, you know, you're, you're, you're a blessed person, and, and um, you know, this, this uh, this is a long ass answer to a short ass question. I apologize, but you know this this thing that I do it's it's afforded me a it, you know I got I was kind of a, a mess up as a kid you know and and now I I've got a wife and I got kids and I have a family that I love with every fiber of my my body you know and and um, it's because of this thing that I found this 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 art that I believe in you know and, and I give everything that I have to it so as far as choosing parts you know I really just try to work with the absolute best people and the absolute best project that's available to me at, at, at the time. And I can't believe now I'm in a, a, a situation where I do get to choose a little bit because you know, for, for years it's just about clawing and scraping and anything that you can do. Um, but I'm, 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 I'm enormously lucky for that. Uh, but that's really, I, 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 you know, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's really the criteria. How good is the material and how good are the people I'm gonna get to work with, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have one of my favorite lines of dialogue in any movie this year, which is, if you don't see me again, I'm dead. Yeah. Which, do you guys see Baby Driver? Yeah. Oh. I'm just curious, what is it like working with Edgar Wright? Uh, it was great, man. I mean, look, man, you know, I'm not really, you know, if you go to the bathroom in the middle, in the beginning of that movie, you're going to miss me, you know what I mean? I'm, it's, it's just a real small thing, but Edgar's a friend, you know, I got to know him around the time uh, that we were doing Fury, and uh, he's, uh, look, he's, uh, he's one of those guys, you know, when, when these guys, you, you mentioned Wind River before, you know, Taylor Sheridan, um, you know, when, when, when guys like that call, Denny Villeneuve and for Sicario, you know, when these, when these, you know, titans, these, these filmmakers call, you know, I, I genuinely believe in my heart of heart that there's no such thing as a, a, a small role or a big role, I, I, I never look at that. I, I just look at who's the filmmaker and is there a chance to sort of do something special and express something. And, and with Edgar, he's just, he's a genius filmmaker and, and uh, you, know, I, you know, I told him he comes calling, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be there for him, you know? It may have been quick, but you were fantastic. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Next one. Hi, um, so you've been in some really interesting roles and like all kinds of different things, and I was wondering if um, there was any, any of the, oh, sorry. Like super nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> don't be nervous. Yeah, don't be. It's just me, dude. Don't. don't be <laughs> yeah, it's all these other people too. I guess that was pretty yeah, selfish of you. Yeah. All right, so you maybe you should be a little nervous. There's a lot of people listening. Here. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Sorry, sorry. Um, but I'm curious if, um, if you know, if the intensity of the roles that you play have any of those roles like had or what effect have they had on you? Have they changed you in the way that you see certain? issues or situations or the, or the way you see Yeah, them. look, you know, if not, shame on me, you know, I mean, I, I think, you know, for me, it's like, I, I, you know, I try to get in there, you know, and, and, and um, 
Sure, sure they do. You know, they, they, they stay with me and that's part of the deal. And, and look, I mean, there's, a, there's, there's, there's like a cost to it. You know, you got to give something of yourself up and, and, and um, you know, even if it's, and I know there, there, there's people with certain kind of jobs, surely, you know, people in the military can, can, um, can relate to it, you know, but, um, you know, when you, when, when you say, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to see my family for, you know, six, seven months at a time, you know, when, when you have young kids and stuff like that, you know, it's, you better give all. You better, you better, you better go and you know leave it all on the field. You better, you better not go screw around and and, and say, oh, I'm not going to dive that deep. That's how I do. Look, there's some actors that I think you know can just sort of show up, and that's unfortunately I'm just not that good. That's not that's not how I work. It's not how I, I I wish I could sometimes. I wish I could just be on my phone and then jump in. You know, like it ain't me. You know, I I can't do it. You know, I have to. I have to dive in there. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely, they, they, they stay with you, and, and and you learn something. You learn something about yourself, your your, your outlook on the world. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, shit. I still look for zombies in the woods. <laughs> I'm not scared of them. I'm just looking for them. You know what I mean? Seriously. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to know what is your opinion on the Mandela effect? On the who what? The Mandela effect. Don't don't look at me. <laughs> uh, like Nelson Mandela? No, well, uh, it's either false memories or the past is retroactively changing. You know, like Luke, I am your father, and then it, uh, some people say it changed to No, I'm your father. James Earl Jones even says he remembers it as. No, I'm your father, and then C-3PO now has a silver leg, and most people remember him all gold, and the Baron Steen what? Bears versus Baron I'm... Stain. <laughs> Bro, I got no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I appreciate you. I, I wish I did. Thanks, everybody. That I was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on, man. Is it Baron Steen or Baron Stein? You look cool, man. <laughs> um, so... We saw you in The Accountant, which was <laughs> opposite Ben Affleck, and then now in Daredevil Season 2, opposite Charlie Cox. Uh, my question is, what was it like to beat up two Daredevils? <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, man, you know, uh, Charlie's tough, man. You know, Charlie's, Charlie's, Char Charlie's, uh, he goes for it, you know. He, 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 gives it all and um, you, know, you can't say enough can't say enough good about 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 Ben you know um, but that was another one man Gavin O'Connor you know if, if you haven't seen his other films the guy the guy who directed he's a guy I wanted to work with so bad you know he did he did Warrior and Pride and Glory and Miracle is a great movie and um, yeah he's, he's a great great filmmaker yeah that didn't even answer your damn question did you want an answer to that question <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I love fighting anybody, man. <laughs> I, uh, I think the, I, it's probably my favorite episode of Daredevil is the rooftop scene. Of, of, of why, do you, why do you think you're better than me kind of thing. I think it's just genius. What was your favorite scene of film? And if it was that one, then we can just move right on. For which? For Daredevil? Yeah. Um, favorite scene. I mean, most fun was the, was the prison scene. Uh, <laughs> There's a level of, uh, you know, the stunts, you know, the, the unsung heroes of our business is, 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 is stunts, and, and they're always, you know, when I can do a job, the people I'm close with is the, the Teamsters and the stunt department. They're always just the guys that I get along with the best. And um, for me, you know, Phil Severa, he's a stunt coordinator on Daredevil, and, um, you know, and, and Eric Linden, you know, these guys are, 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 are true geniuses. I mean, Phil has a truly sick mind, you know, to think all that shit up. And what, what's great about it is, um, look, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fighter, I'm a boxer, you know, I, I, I pride myself on, on, on um, I think the way that a character fights, the way that a man deals with violence is, is very important to how you play a role. And it's gotta be specific and it's gotta be real. And that's Phil's kind of mantra. Um, what I dig about those shows is, you know, when you do a fight scene for the accountant, you can rehearse it for three months, you got two weeks to shoot it, you know, you can perfect every little move. But when we did that prison scene, that prison fight, we kind of learned it that day while we were shooting other shit. We had an afternoon, we had one half of the day after lunch to shoot it, you know? So you gotta do it in one take. Sometimes you just gotta hit people for, people are gonna get hurt, people aren't gonna, they're, they're gonna be different when it's over than they were when it's over. <laughs> people will look different. And 
everybody just, we all sort of agree, and they're bad dudes, man. They're like, hey, man, just bring it on, you know? We're going to bring it on to you. And, and, and if you can get that, I like that. I like when stunts, I like when fighting in movies is charged. I like when it's, when there's something that could potentially go wrong. And I know that's probably rubbed people the wrong way, but I like it when our back's against the wall and, and we're racing time and, and we've got to get it right. We've got to, we've got to do it. That, you know, I, I think there should be that sense of, of danger. It should be there. And um, I love doing that. I loved, I loved, uh, I, 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 you know, I thought that that was a really fun scene to shoot. My, as far as Daredevil goes, the scene that I'm most grateful for was the scene uh, by the grave when I uh, got to talk about my, my family. You know, you know, when an actor gets a, a gift like that, you know, the, the man who wrote that is a guy named John Kelly. He's a he's a um, he's a Marine, and he fought he, he, he fought in uh, Desert Storm, and uh, you know, I feel like only a, a real soldier could have written that, and and uh, I, I'm quite guilty of of. Uh, of, of changing dialogue and, and fighting for things to be a little bit different. I did not change a freaking letter, you know? It was just this perfectly written speech. And I felt that if, 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 if you let Frank say that, then you can have, you know, the, the balls to, to go full. You can go full out on it. When it's time for him to be brutal, be brutal because of that, because you've earned it, because that's what's behind all of it, you know? And, and it was such a gift. It was a super hard thing to, a super hard speech. Um, just really uh, I want this show so bad. <laughs> Next question. Hey, John. Hey, buddy. Big fan. Thanks, man. And I want to ask you, um, Punisher is kind of a complex character. Who is? Punisher. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I just wanted to know, how do you feel his time in the army, taking a bullet to the brain, how has that affected his psyche, and how does that affect the way you play him? Uh, look, I mean, I think it's all, it, it, it's all part of it. I, I, I've all, I, you know, the way I look at it is, uh, you know, his, his time in the military was, uh, is something sort of separate, which I can't really talk about what we're going to address you know, in this first season. But to me, you know, the, 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 the character that was in Daredevil season two, you know, that wasn't the, the Punisher to me. You know, that was, that was a man who, you know, this, this, this trauma, this traumatic event that, that, that went down, you know, he's still very much reeling from that. He's still very much, everything in his life was in, in reaction to that. Um, he's not a guy who's looking to, to rid the criminal element of Hell's Kitchen. He could care less about that. He doesn't care about getting bad guys. He wants to find every single person who had anything to do with his family's death and kill them in as brutal a way as possible. To watch them die, to watch them breathe their last breath. To watch it. And, you know, look, some people... For me, I think my job as an actor is not to sort of say, is this guy a good guy or is this a bad guy? My job is to open my heart and empathize. And I'm a father and I'm a husband. And I don't think I could do that part if, if I wasn't that. And it, it, until you know how to love something way more than yourself and you gladly give your life for it, can you begin to understand what it would potentially be like to lose something like that? And that's something I take super seriously. So I think Frank in, 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 in Daredevil, you know, it's not about the military, it's not about the, the, the bullet to the head, it's all about that event. Every single moment is about that event. And the only way he knows how to quell the noise, the only no way he knows how to just is, 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 is to go get them, you know? Woo! Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm sorry. My name is Steven, and I have a question. What's it like auditioning for The Punisher and Daredevil season two? Was it like auditioning for it? Yes. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, uh, I was, you know, when I, <laughs> I was doing a movie in, uh, I was doing a movie on the, the west coast of, uh, of Ireland. We were like way out in the middle of nowhere, right? And uh, it's a 12th century movie, it's called Pilgrimage. And uh, thanks to the one person who saw that. <laughs> and, uh, but I, you know, it, it, um, I was playing a, a, a mute in the, in the movie. And so um, me being the jackass I was, I decided that I wasn't gonna speak um, you know, on set or off while we're making the movie. And then it, it about, 
three weeks three weeks into the process, I realized that was really getting in the way of shit, and uh, I decided to talk again. You know, there's heavy action scenes, and you know, not being able to tell people what you're gonna do, and that was getting in the way. And and the entire international cast decided they liked me a lot better while I was mute. Uh, so. <laughs> But uh, in, in, in all seriousness, you know, Tommy Holland was on that movie, and um, um, that's my guy. I love him. And he was in the middle of his numerous Spider-Man auditions. And, uh, you know, the determination and the, the focus and the drive and the courage that he showed through that process. It was a year-long audition process, and he was just... This kid blew me away. I, I've never seen anything like it. Not in just a young man, but in just a man, period. Anybody, any actor. He... Uh, he, he went after that part and just kept fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. And, um, you know, we helped him with it. We, we shot his auditions, we, we, we read lines with him, we, um, you know, we worked on it with him. And then this thing for Punisher came around while we were there. So, uh, he did the same for me. And uh, we, we went to this, uh, we went to this, this park and uh, we shot, I remember the scene, it was like a fake scene and it was about a, a, a man and, and a young boy. And obviously, Tommy played the young boy, and they were they were going to shoot a uh, they were going to hunt. And the little boy was, I think, uh, you, you know, it was going to be his first kill. And the, the, the man was sort of talking him through it. That was the scene. I remember there's this great actor, Stanley Weber, uh, a French actor. He freaking played the deer while we were shooting. He so, <laughs> you know, like a little asshole, you know. Maybe it's funny as hell. But yeah, you know. So me and Tommy, when we sent in my audition tape, it was Tommy and me on the on the tape. And uh, so yeah, you know that's and um, you know it's a real friendship. I, I I love him and I admire him so much. And, and uh, I, I I he comes from good people, man. He's got a great family. He puts his family before everything. And uh, the sky's the limit with that dude. You know what I mean? So, so, so now that you guys are in the same universe, who's taking the fight, Spider-Man or Punisher? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hi, um, big fan, obviously. Thank you. Uh, so, I was wondering, did you get around to see uh, Defenders at all? Not. So, uh, in that show, there's a lot of like weird, mystical stuff, and I was wondering how you think Frank Castle would react to all that weird, otherworldly stuff. Like, would he believe in it? Would he think it's just all bullshit? Like, how do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, you know, I, I'd have to see it, you know, and I will. I, I, you know, I can't wait to see it. I'm just, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's great. I've heard it's great. I've heard it's great, and I and, and I will see it, man. I'm just, I've, uh, I've been shooting something else, and, and any any free time I have with my babies, you know. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Next question. Who is your favorite DC character? DC character. <laughs> It's tough, you know. A Joker. <laughs> What's up? Hi, my name's Karina. You're, you're so gorgeous in person. <laughs> Look at my hair, dude. It looks like a mushroom. It's so embarrassing, this stupid hair. I can't wait to cut it off. Um, my question is. Do you think the world of today needs a Punisher to make it safer? Good question. It's a good question. <laughs> you know, look, I mean, you know... <laughs> no, you're alright. I'm just thinking, you know, yeah, you know, it's like, uh, look, I don't want to bullshit you and I don't want to get out of your, I, I don't want to wiggle my way out, you know, so I ain't going to wiggle, I'm just going to tell you what my gut tells me, and I think, you know, for me, it's, it's, you know, for him, it's just so personal, you know what I mean, it's, it's, it's so personal, and it just, it, it just, they just, they just, and excuse my language for the kids in here, but they just fucked with the wrong guy, <laughs> yeah. like, that's what it is, it's just with the wrong guy. That guy can be, can be put to use. I mean, he's a, he's a he's an instrument. You know what I mean? He's an instrument. And and and, uh, and and like, do we need people like that, or should we should we 
completely revere and applaud and get behind and support in every way the soldiers that fight for this country and, and, and guys that are able like that, 100%, 100%. <laughs> I was hoping you could talk about your experience in Wind River. Cool. What do you want to know, man? <laughs> uh, it was a short scene, so uh, was that like one day? Was that multiple days? How would it uh, go? You know, we just we just went out there for the day. Look, Taylor Sheridan is a, is a, is a brilliant, brilliant writer. And you know, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but you know, he wrote Sicario. He wrote Hell or High Water. Uh, he wrote Wind River. Um, he's got a new movie coming out that he wrote. He's got a new show that's coming out on HBO that he wrote. He was also uh, an actor. He was, he was on Sons of Anarchy. I don't know if you guys know that. He was the sheriff, you know, on, on Sons of Anarchy. And uh, he's just, you know, Taylor's just a real man. You know what I mean? He's, he's just he's just a real deal. He lives here in Utah, by the way. And uh, for a second, I was just like, shit, I'm in Utah, right? <laughs> I just travel all the time, man. Damn, for a second I was like, am I in Rhode Island, dude? Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, how lame is that? How horribly lame is that? Anyway, uh, literally that's what I thought. Damn, I love you, Tom. I mean, we just got we just got finished talking about that too. Uh, but uh, you know, it was another one of those things. He called me. He called me personally. Said, hey, look, man, this is gonna be the deal. He explained to me sort of what the scene was gonna be and. I don't want to give it away, but how you know you're going to think one thing and then something else is going to turn into another. And the way he sort of proposed it to me, he, he took me through this whole thing and said, you know, look, man, in this one 10, 15 minute scene, we're going to have to go from thinking you're one guy to seeing that like that love and how you care about this person is totally real, and it's going to be your job to convince the audience of that, you know, in one sort of speech with, you know, with this character. Again, I'm trying to be, uh, you know, I'm trying not to give it away, dude. Um, but. Um, I was like, dude, you don't got to pitch me, man. You want me on there, brother. Like, you, you know, he's 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 a friend and someone who I who I deeply believe in. And you know, the way he ran that set, you know, it's um, you know, you see in the film, but it, it becomes quite violent and brutal. And you know, um, and there were stunt guys there. Like, there ain't gonna be any stunt. They, we, we just fought in that little trailer, and I lost all my toenails because I was a dipshit who got in the bed with just a pair of boxers on. So like, they all had boots and they're out, you know. So I had to wrestle all them guys and. I lost all my toenails, which kind of sucked. I have like big nasty toenails and they were all over the floor. But uh, um, it was great, I loved it. I really loved it and, and uh, I, I, I love you know, the stakes of that scene. I love that it sort of went like that. And you know, anytime I think, you know, I, I was able to do something sort of like it in Sicario, anytime you can come into a film, I think, and, 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 and sort of have your own little bottle, your own little part of it that tells your own little story. And if you can, if you can bring, you know, real stakes and real, uh, if you can bring a real backstory and, 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 and real uh, depth to a smaller character, I think it adds authenticity and it adds layers to the entire piece. And so anytime I'm asked to do that, I look at it as a huge challenge and something I'm really, really eager to do. It's, 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 it's probably my favorite thing to do as an actor. So I, I love doing it. I loved it. Thanks, man. Plus, I got to talk about Ojai, man. That's where I'm from. Yeah. Well, not where I'm from, but where I live. Sorry. So earlier today, you and I had a chance to talk about PTSD. And I'd like to know where you kind of drew your inspiration from or how you, you determined how you wanted to portray that in an accurate way. Well, uh, again, I think that, I, I think that the, you know, from what you've seen so far, and I, and I really appreciate our conversation earlier and, and uh, you know, and... Uh, you know, I, I, I feel for you and, and, and your family, and I, I have the deepest respect for you. And uh, look, as far as Daredevil season two, for what you've seen, as far as PTSD, you've kind of seen it, and I'm standing by what I said. You know, what he's, what he's reeling from and what sort of unhinges him is, is, is not what happened to him in Afghanistan or in Iraq. You know, what, 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 what happened to him is what happened to him. What he's reeling from is what happened to him at that carousel, okay? Now, I, I can't get into what we get into. And, and you, you gotta, next year you come back and let's talk about it. You know what I'm and, and, and because I, you know, I think there's some, I have a really solid answer, I just can't tell you because that's the, the lameness of what I do. 
There's, there's a little laser dot that's gonna come on your chest. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, don't, don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, I like the, the Punisher, and you thank did you. a great job. You a Yankees fan. Um, I just have... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering why you just, oh, you just like I it. just I just went to to New York. Oh, okay. And, cool, cool, cool. and we, I went to the Yankees game. Okay. And right on. I just I actually, I've just met a I'm, lot of Yankees fans today. I just, I, I'm, I'm actually not a Yankees fan. Okay, cool, good, 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 good. Neither am I. I just Neither have, am I. I not even a little bit. Have a, a good, good. So sorry. Sorry. Are you disappointed she's a Yankees fan? I, I, I am not a huge fan of the Yankees. Okay, me neither. I, I'm, I'm just wearing the shirt. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's kind of cold outside, so. <laughs> um, I just wanted to know, um, the rooftop scene when you were um, beating the crap out of... <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to use any bad language, I promise. Um, Daredevil. Um, when the, and then you had to like turn into the nice Frank. Um, I don't know if you kind of know this scene. Is it hard for you to change characters into like the, Punish, like, the Punisher and then to the, like, the good guy? Is it hard for you to like... I remember when the, when the just, superintendent came upstairs looking to see what was up and then... Right. Well, I think, you know, look, Is I it think... Is just hard to... Oh, I, I apologize. Don't apologize. I'm you sorry, are... I interrupted. You're not even a Yankees fan. <laughs> <laughs> sorry to interrupt. Okay, go ahead. You, I think I interrupted, so I apologize. <laughs> I think that... Uh, I, th I think that... Um, you know, look. It's, it, for me, it's not. It's not. That's not changing characters. You know, I think what the whole idea of that is to show that you know Frank is. Uh, I think that Frank is. Uh, you, you, again, I got to be careful not to say. I think. I think there, the, you know the point of that was to show that um, he's tactical and he's smart and he's you, you, you know Frank Frank Castle is by no means you, you know some blunt. You know, just weapon. You know, just some like, uh, you know what I mean? He's a he's a thinking man. You know, and it's it's a it's a, it's a testament. He everything about him is tactical. And switching on switching on a dime like that is uh, that was that that was done in order to you know further the mission. You know, and, and so it's not switching characters at all. It's just using a different tactic. It's like picking up a different weapon. You know what I mean? Right on. Thank you. I, I think one of the I've known the line of dialogue great is. Uh, was it Daredevil says, why did you cock the hammer back? And he says something like, because I want to make sure you're paying attention. Oh, just <laughs> dirty. <laughs> Next question. All right, so uh, like you said, Punisher is a character that means a lot to a lot of different people. And I was curious, like, where you got your inspiration from for the character. If you, like, drew from the other live-action versions of, of Punisher, or if you wanted to focus solely on adapting, like, the comic character. Just like, what inspired your Punisher? You know, I don't know if there's any one thing, you know, my job was to sort of like gobble up everything I possibly could and talk, talk to as many people as I, I, as I could. I mean, look, the Punisher Max series, you know, Garth Ennis' line is like something that, he, you know, that's the thing that I was always sort of going back to and, 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 and I, love, I, I just love that, you know, Punisher Max, I just love it. Um, but there's stuff to take from, from, from all of it. Um, and then I think the job is always to sort of gobble up as much as you can and, you know, I don't want to get too heady or too, like, um, douchey, but, you know, I think that there's, like, you know, you can get, you know, I think art and, and like, being, the way that I always learn it is you can either get it from the outside world, right? Like, you can either get it from, from you know, the mountains or the trees or, like, the world around you, or you can get it from other art, you know, you can watch you look at other, watch other movies, listen to music, look at paintings, and it can inspire you. Or you can just go from your own memories and shit that you've been through. And um, I really like to spend real time doing all three, you know what I mean? And, and, and uh, really walking in the character's shoes, taking, taking long, long walks, you know, through New York, you know, before the sun comes up and walk till, the, walk till it's, it's all the way up, you know, just walk around the city, walk back and forth across the Brooklyn Bridge, you know, just in character, go into a convenience store, in character, buy something, you know, just start pushing the envelope that way, and that's, that's just kind of how I, I work, but, 
you know, all of it. You know, I thought that the dirty laundry, the the, the little short that Tom Jane made, you know, like that's awesome. You know, like, like there's so many, there's so much from the different films that you can draw upon, but it's so much from the comics. You know, it's, it's one of the reason, you know, that I feel <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I feel so much, you know, pressure about it, and 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 I, and I really want to get it right. And, and uh, I've said before, you know. Comic book audience, it's, it's, a, it's a super intelligent and passionate audience, best audience in the world. And I think the reason for that being is like, you know, the, the, the act of reading a comic book, right? It's like you read these words and you look at these illustrations in these panels, and then your job is you've got to fill in so much of the blanks in your own imagination. So that means that Frank Castle. It belongs to you. Like Frank Castle belongs to the audience. It belongs to the comic book audience that have been reading him and and and, lo and, and loving him and being afraid of him and, and revering him or whatever it is for years, right? So it belongs to you guys. And and like that's why you got to get this shit right. That's why you can't just take liberties. That being said, I got to do all that and then got to make it mine. Like I got to make it mine. I got to believe it. That, that you, you know, I I got I got to believe that I I know him. You know what I mean? Well, uh, we mentioned a couple times, but just uh, Sh Shane in The Walking Dead, uh, amazing. I think we're, we're all Frank Castle because I think we're freaking out about that thing too. But Shane is The Walking Dead. Between the two characters, was, was there one that you slipped, you know, into the skin a little bit easier, or is it? No, man. No, I mean, it's. Uh... I mean, I, I mean, look, you know, Shane. Uh, Shane was such an awesome opportunity for me at a at a at a, at a time, you know, where I was really, you know, I'm I'm always hungry, but I was, I, you know, I really wanted to. It, it was just it was just sort of perfect, you know, and, and the, the the whole The Walking Dead was one of those jobs that that uh, you know in the beginning it was like it was just one of those dream jobs, you know, in my business, you know, you, you read a script and and you fall in love with it, and then you really want the job, right? And then you get the job, and then you start meeting people. You start meeting the producers, you start meeting the, the directors, you start meeting the crew, you start meeting the actors. And sometimes, the more people you meet, and the more you, the job becomes more and more real, the more shitty it gets. The more it's like, yeah, all right, these guys aren't gonna go the way that I want it. Like, they're not gonna work the way I want to work. And Walking Dead was just one of these dream jobs where you read this script, and I just, I was like, I have to do this. I have to play this part. And I went through the audition process, and the audition process was awesome. Like, it was just awesome. It was like no, there was no bullshit, which is so rare in an audition process. It was all about just let's get the best performances, get the best people possible. That's a total testament to Frank Darabont. And then you meet Frank, and then you start meeting the producers, you meet Gail, and then, and then you start meeting, you know, you meet Andy Lincoln, and you meet frickin' Norman, and, 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 and Melissa, and then Sarah Wayne Callies, so you meet Jeff DeMont, you meet these people, and every person just gets better and better, and you realize there's not a single person there who's not there because they want to prove something, and they believe in it. No, hey, is my makeup right, is my hair, you're in a frickin' apocalypse, dude. Like, like, let's go, man, get your ass, and it's one of those shows that really could have gone, you know, I've said it before, you know, when they started that show, there was no, it was very humble, you know, there was no guarantees that that show was gonna work out at all. They picked us up for six episodes. That means like, we don't really believe in you that much. And like, you know, when we went to do it, you know, you set a bunch of people out into the woods and to pretend that there's zombies in the woods, if one person isn't going as hard as possible, if one person isn't going full out, it makes it all, it, it, it just makes it all not believable for everybody else. Your eyes will go to that person. And the only way to sort of create that reality is everybody's gotta go full steam all the time. That's really what season one was, was just a bunch of us just in the woods. And, and, uh, and it was great, and I'm so grateful for it. And, and I'm so grateful for getting killed off of it, you know? I, I am, I am. I, I really feel like at the time it kind of horrified me, but you know, the, the fact that I got to go in knowing that he wasn't gonna make it, and, and I knew that there was gonna be this amazing journey of this, this character who we we're gonna be introduced to, where he's having a conversation with his best friend, and they're eating a couple burgers, eating fries, sharing a pile of ketchup, talking about his buddy's marital problems, and he's genuinely trying to help his buddy, and I knew that in the course of a couple seasons, I was gonna be sleeping with his wife, I was gonna try to kill him, lose his, it's just like, there's all these buoys along that ride of things to touch, lose your mind, I mean, it's just this great, 
character, unbelievable character with a real beginning, middle, and end, and that's very rare in, in what we get to do. And um, I'm just so grateful for it. I'm, just, I'm, I'm grateful for it because I love the character, I love doing it, but more than anything else, I love the people. I like the people that I made Walking Dead with are still some of the, the closest people I have in my life, and I mean, really my brothers and my sisters. I've never worked with people you know, on a set where I've gotten that close, and we remain that close, and uh, I think that's a big reason why the show is, 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 is what it is. It's just that, that, that core group, there's, there's, there's a lot of love, you know, a lot of love there, and a lot of people that uh, you know, really care about each other. How did you find out that Shane wasn't going to make it? Did they like pull you into the office and be like, we need to have a conversation? I mean, I was lucky that, you know, like when, when it first started, you know, you had to audition, you know, all the actors that, that, that Frank was considering had to audition for Rick and Shane. I first auditioned for Rick, and, uh, and then he made everyone, the guys that he was interested in, there's 10 of us, and he had us go to a sound stage and do that scene about, you know, why women never turn the lights off in the, in the cop car. And, you know, normally in a, in a big screen, I'm sorry if this is boring to y'all, but, like, it, it's, uh, I mean, you asked, so I'm going to tell it, dude. I just feel like I'm talking my ass off. But, like, you know, normally in a, in a screen test, in a big audition, you know, you go down, you know, thousands and thousands of people are auditioning, and it starts getting whittled down. And then the last step is the screen test. And normally screen test is you, you sit in a room and... There's like a hundred people in suits in front of you and you're reading with somebody who's out there in the suits and like who are these people to, to decide whether you can act well? You know what I mean? They're, 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 you know, they're not people who should be doing that. You know what I mean? And anyhow, uh, but the way that Frank did it is he just had us in a sound stage. No network people could be there and he just had the actors. We all spent the day together and everybody got to read with each other, playing both roles, Rick and Shane, going back and forth. And it was, the, 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 it, there was a real cop car there, it was lit, it was rigged for sound, and he was just genuinely, he didn't want anybody to be nervous, and he just genuinely wanted everybody's best performances. And uh, it, was, it, it was a crazy day, and we didn't find Andy that day. Um, but at the end of the day, he came up to me and he said, you know, what do you, which of these parts do you like? Which of these parts do you think is, and I said, look, man, I'm gonna make this easy. Like, all I wanna do is play Shane. He said, you know, he's not gonna last very long. You know, and at that point, you know, I, shit, I just, I didn't even know the show was gonna get picked up. You know I mean? I didn't know it was gonna be the biggest show in the world, but, you know, <laughs> but look, the, he, he was only really considering me for, for, for Shane, and, and I, I wouldn't have changed it for the world. You know, I, I, uh, I knew, I knew before, so the answer to your question, I apologize, is uh, I knew before we got in, we, we always knew Shane wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna make it very long. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Good yeah. question. Hey man, how's it going? What's up, bro? Um, my question is, is it hard for you to transfer between your characters from John, yourself, and Frank? Is that hard for you? And have you ever stayed in character too long when you didn't mean to? Look, I drive. I got. I got a bunch of pit bull dogs, and and uh, I drive. So I drive everywhere. I take my truck. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't fly to work, right? So like, I, I drive across the country all the time, and that's sort of my process, man. So it's like when that thing's done, you know, I, I pack up my stuff, I throw it in the truck, put my dog. Most of my dogs in the back, but I put. I put my dog Boss. He sits right next to me, and I'm like, dude, there's another one done. He looks up at me, and we start hitting the road, and that drive is sort of to. You know, let let it all go and start getting ready to be dad again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well. I was wondering, on The Walking Dead, do you think you and Negan would ever get along? Uh, you know, uh, probably not. <laughs> yeah, probably not. My husband loves your shows. Um, I was, we were just looking up your information, how old you were, um, and um, we... I, My husband loves your shows, I hate them, but... No, 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 I, I just husband? can't watch violence because I went through, um, um, I didn't go through military, but I had PCT, PTSD through a C-section. So, um, but no, um, I was gonna ask, is it your birthday yesterday? Uh, two days ago. Two days ago. So, <laughs> I just want you to ask the audience if they can wish you a happy birthday. Oh shit, thanks, y'all. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Hello. Uh, yes, I was just curious which character was more enjoyable for you to create? The vengeful rage of the Punisher or the jealousy rage of Shane? 
Good question, man. You know, I can't, you know, it's like choosing between your kids, you know, you gotta, you gotta love what you're doing while you're, while you're doing it, you know. Uh, um, but that was it, you know, it's, it, uh, you know, for Shane, that was it, man. That, that, that jealousy, that loneliness, that's, that's, that's the deal, and, and you hit on the head with, with Punisher, too. It's, um, but I, I try to not, you know, I'm not, I'm not really looking for, like, what's more in, in, enjoyable. Like, I'm not, I'm not really looking to, like, you know, like, have a good time. You know what I mean? I, I, I wish it was a little bit different for me, but I'm just not. You know, especially with, 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 with Frank. Like, I feel like that's not it. You know, like, you gotta, you, gotta, you know, just, just try to do it. it just, just try to, like, touch on the honesty of it. But it's, it's, it's def definitely, for me, not about, you, you know, whether I have fun or not. Like, I'm not looking for fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, We've got time for one more. Sweet. Sweet. Make a camera. Sweet. I was wondering if you've been able to keep up on Walking Dead since Shane left, and if so, what do you think of Rick's character development? Because he's gotten to be kind of Shane-like. Yeah, I've heard ways. that. You know, unfortunately, uh, again, man, I, you know, just, I haven't. You know, that's just a crappy answer, and I, I you know, but, but, but I had not been able to, to keep up, which sucks. You know, yeah. I know. What a shitty way to end. Can we do one more question? We'll do one more. Yeah. <laughs> anybody. Go yeah. I think they probably sent them away. I'll ask you my favorite yeah, question to ask anybody. Yeah. Uh, I think it tells a lot about a person. Yeah. What is your go to karaoke song? Yeah. Your go to karaoke song. Look. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? You could say Metallica um, 1. I mean, I'll tell you, you probably don't listen to it. I mean, maybe I'll do. I don't know. It's uh, it's a uh, long haired redneck by David Allen Coe. Nice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's our new Punisher. Please give it up for John Merrick.